Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. We are the Chinadian couple. And today we are going to look at a problem that we have. We're going to do an update on the lettuce that we were growing in our grow tent, which is right behind us. Yes. And we're going to look at a problem that we came into and talk about how we're going to fix it. Yes. Our indoor garden is fantastic. <laughs> My friend Rudy loves the lettuce. Really? You can see that the lettuce is quite a bit bigger than it was in the last video. And one of the biggest problems that we have right now is being able to keep up with the watering. It's taking about two and a half gallons of water a day. And you can see it's completely dry right now. One thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean out this lettuce or at least a large portion of it. and. Wherever there's room, we're going to plant a few other things like bok choy and other things that we think that can grow just for a little bit more variety. So these are our chili peppers and you can see that they are flowering quite nice. Um, you can tell that the, the leaves are a little wrinkled. They were taking in a little bit too much nutrients. I was fertilizing these. Uh, I probably shouldn't have since there is fertilizer in the soil itself. Today I'm going to prune them and then tomorrow I'm going to buy some topsoil and put it in here to uh, bury almost as much as the plant as I can probably get because it will turn into root base and it'll produce more peppers in the long run if we do that. These are the ghost peppers. Uh, they are just starting to get a few flowers. Again, you can see that the, the leaves are pretty wrinkled. I was, like I said earlier, I was fertilizing these. And probably should have held off again i am going to cut down pretty much all of these leaves probably up to here and then i'm going to bury it deeper just so that we have more root base when it starts flowering this is our potato plant and you can see how tall it has gotten it is ridiculous uh, again potatoes i put this in pretty shallow soil so that we could fill it up so it'll produce more potatoes if it produces any potatoes at all but it is flowering so that means it's producing something yeah there's a potato really i'm just not sure how big this needs some support this is massive yeah. this would never grow like this outside yeah you can see how tall and stringy these tomatoes are. We do have some that are flowering. We do have some that have tomatoes on the vine. Oh. You can take all of this off this main branch. And you can bury it. Now, when people talk about pruning their tomatoes, they always talk about the vines that are in the elbow this will never produce tomatoes so we can pop those off but this is too stringy so what we're going to do is we're going to take off pretty much all of this growth up to about here and we're going to rebury it and try and get this to turn into root base and then continue growing the tomatoes from here up Now it looks pretty aggressive. It is a little bit aggressive, uh, but these will turn into roots for sure. I have done this for years and it's always worked out good. Whenever we plant tomatoes in our garden, we always let them go a little bit longer than most, a li little over a foot. And then what we'll do is we'll carefully put this into the soil. I'll bury it and we'll give you another update later as um, these continue to grow. So the brand of nutrients that I use for most of my plants is Holland Secret. Um, it gives you directions on the back to use for your stages. So for seedlings and cuttings, um, the micronutrient is 1.2 milliliters per four liters. So we do a five gallon pail. I basically do one tablespoon of nutrient 
uh, for the micro, the grow, and the bloom. Um, pretty much that is my mixture. If I get flowering plants, and then you can look, it actually goes up quite a bit. If you're going into uh, early flowering, you're looking at 10 milliliters per four liters for the bloom, five for the micro, and five again for the grow. Always start with the micro. One tablespoon. Now with the micro, you're supposed to mix it in before you mix any other nutrient in. I usually get it stirring and then add the rest. And then the bloom. And I'll show you the nutrient content when I'm done here. This one is a nutrient, it's just calcium and magnesium. It allows um, the plants to grow much better. If you don't have this, your leaves are gonna yellow and your plants aren't gonna do as well. This is grow. This is just, um, I'll show you. On any fertilizer, there's always three numbers. The first one is nitrogen. The second one is phosphate. The third one is potash. So this tells you the combination or the, the mixture of that. So you can see the grow is 217. The micronutrient is 502. The CalMag is 200, but if you look at the nutrients that are in it, uh, it's the micronutrients that are involved that make it so good. And the Bloom, 0, 6, and 4. Now, one thing that we do add is blackstrap molasses. Uh, this helps the root growth, and it actually it gives a good flavor to the plants as well. It makes them healthier. Um, unfortunately, We've had some die off with our lettuce, but the lettuce is great tasting. And there's about two tablespoons. So then we mix it in the pail. And this is RO water. I don't want any anything inside of uh, the plants that I'm not in control of. We are in well water here, so we do have a high content of dissolved minerals in our water. So we're going to pour in about a half pail. No, it's okay. How is that? I'm good. <laughs> so as the pump starts taking everything up, uh, this pail will actually drop and I'll actually put in some more. So. So after watering the lettuce, we are going to pruning the pepper, just here. So I'm going to be pretty aggressive with these. Uh, we're going to take off the first stage leaves. We're going to actually come up and take off the next set as well. These leaves offer no value to the plant. And if you overwinter your hot peppers, you can cut off pretty much 80% of the growth that they received that year and you're still going to be fine. You'll make them go dormant and then in the spring they will continue to grow. Peppers are not an annual plant, they are perennial. Um, if you look online you can see some pepper plants that are like trees. These are the chili peppers and we love chili peppers. We actually eat them almost daily. I think that's getting close. There's one more over here. So what I will do is tomorrow, I'm gonna come in and I will top, I'll fill this up pretty close to the top with soil and 
then all of this will turn into root base for the plants and they will continue to grow. I'm gonna might even try and separate these plants. It seems like there's a couple in each one of these uh, cocoa core beds. If you are growing in a grow tent, it's not a bad idea to take your flowers and you can see the pollen, maybe not, but the pollen is falling off the flower and you just want to touch your flowers. You can use Q-tips, you can use anything you need just to transfer that pollen onto the flowers and that'll help pollinate your plants since we don't have bees inside of here. So as I'm pollinating these, um, this one small plant has 18 to 20 flowers already on it. Uh, if they do get pollinated, you will produce a pepper for each one of the flowers. Each one of the flowers will produce between 15 and 30 seeds. So the life cycle of these plants is pretty quick. You can always take those seeds and plant them and continue to grow these forever. Now we move to ghost pepper. So these ghost pepper plants, they're just starting to get some flowers. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more gentle with these because I've never grown these before. Uh, and I'm curious that if I prune them too much, whether or not it's going to stress the plant out. Um, I know with the chili peppers, they'll be fine. So I'm just going to take off three or four courses of leaves. And you want to take them off as close to the stem as possible. Just that much, huh? Yeah, just that much. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to fill it up with soil to just under this big leaf mm. that's right here. Okay. And then all of that should turn into a root base. Okay. I'll continue with the rest of these. If you haven't grown any plants before, these are the first primary leaves when the seed pushes out of the ground. Um, these are unnecessary. They're only meant to help the seed germinate and uh, come out of the ground. These can be cut off at any time once there's a few leaves because they are not very beneficial. And this one I'm gonna leave because- Small? So small. Yeah, just let it grow. I think what I might do is I might move this one over to give yeah. that one more room. Yes. Tomorrow. Because I'm going to bury these deeper. Mm. Hey, thank you for watching our video today. We are the... Canadian couple. Mm -hmm. We'll do an update in a couple weeks, show you how everything is taken to being pruned and put back in the ground. And we'll see if we're getting any more tomatoes. We'll see if we have any t peppers. And we'll see if how the potatoes are doing. Mm -hmm. hey, okay, see you next time. Bye. If you like the video, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe or us. Subscribe or us. See you.